Hi, today I'm going to share with you some children's books about whales and dolphins. My kids and I recently finished a homeschool unit on the ocean. One of the weeks that we did was devoted to whales and dolphins. So I'm going to show you some of the books that we used for that week and tell you a bit about them. Um, I have linked all of the videos that I've linked all the books that I'm sharing in this video below their Amazon affiliate links. So if you use those links to buy the books, they cost the same, but it helps support the channel too. So please use those links if you decide you want to get any of these. Um, so first, here's The Blue Whale by Jenny Desmond. This is like beautiful illustrations, really lightly done. Um, and it has lots of information about blue whales and uh, this says the average blue whale weighs as much as a heap of 55 hippopotami. So it just has such a fun spirit to it um, that it makes it a real joy to read. And I think a book that you could read over and over again and you're getting lots of good information but in such a fun and engaging way. So that's The Blue Whale by Jenny Desmond. Then I have Our Amazing World Whales by Kay de Sevilla. This is uh, a book that we actually already had that my son had received as a birthday present one year from his grandparents because my son really loves whales. Um, so this one goes through a little, some facts about whales, but then really specifically uh, breaks down information about lots of different types of whales um, and has some beautiful photographs. Definitely a fun one to look at. In looking for whale books, I found lots of whale books that were about whale rescue. Um, and this was one of them, Trapped, A Whale's Rescue by Robert Burlay. Um, and it introduces the whale and then shows how a whale can become entrapped and then how a rescue operation would go. So really action packed and interesting read for kids. That's Trapped, A Whale's Rescue. And then on the same theme, there's The Fisherman and the Whale. And this is a wordless picture book. Um, absolutely gorgeous illustrations. And again, tells the story of a whale that gets trapped and a fisherman and his son and what they do to rescue the whale. It's really moving and um, beautifully illustrated and made me a bigger fan of the wordless picture book than I had been in the past. The Fisherman and the Whale. Um, another whale rescue, this one is a rescue of a beast whale, is Emma and the Whale. And this one is fun. It's very, um, it has these quirky nautical illustrations that I really appreciate. Um, and the story of a little girl who rescues a beach whale. Emma and the Whale. And then uh, this one is the Storm Whale in Winter where we have a whale rescue a little boy. So a uh, bit of reversal. This one is, is really cute too. Um, really cute illustrations and nice little story about a whale. Okay, and then um, for a read aloud two, we use this book, Beyond Words, What Elephants and Whales Think and Feel. This is by Carl Safina. We skipped the elephant part for this unit, um, but we might go back and study, I think we'll study elephants next year and do the elephant um, section. So this part was about um, orcas, killer whales, and uh, what we know about them and how we know it. And I really like how this one focuses on the scientists um, and their interactions with whales and what they've learned from whales. I like, um, I really like books that not only share what scientists know, but 
examine what it's what kind of work scientists do and how they know what they know um so and how how to think like a scientist I think that's a really important um part to get across to my kids so this is beyond words what elephants and whales think and feel and then uh similarly we have the orca scientists by Kim Perez Valise, and this actually finally has the same scientist that was featured in Beyond Words. Um, Ken Belcombe is at the center of this book, too. Um, so this one was really long. We actually didn't make it. There's Ken. Uh, we didn't make it all the way through the whole book. I think it's better for maybe middle school students um, because. The content is pretty advanced and just it's, it's quite long, but we, we read about half of it and I really enjoyed it. So, and this one is part of a series too. Um, there's other ones in the series, the great white shark scientists, the elephant scientists, polar bear scientists. Um, and we've looked at a couple of these and they're all really good. Quest for the tree kangaroo. We did that one. And on orcas again, we have Whales Passing by Eve Bunting. Really pretty illustrations. This is simpler, shorter text. And again, is um, it's told in a narrative about a boy and his dad watching the whales. And really pretty. Still on orcas, we also read a chapter book. Um, this took us more than a week because it's really long. Um, so this just took us about three weeks to read. This is A Whale of the Wild by Roseanne Perry. We had previously read another book by Roseanne Perry, The Turn of the Tide. Uh, that's on my YouTube channel to the review of that if you would like to hear it. Um, this f is from the point of view of the orcas of... Um, to a brother and a sister, Vega and Deneb, and the adventure that they have in the ocean. Um, so we mostly really like this. I think that the writing is really strong. I felt like content-wise, it might have been a little too old for my kids. There were some really dark moments in um, the first half that I might not have read it to them if I had known that those were coming. I think this is a really good book for middle schoolers, and I think that's really who it was written for. Um, my kids are 7 and 10, so I felt like they were a little bit young for the content of it. Um, but you learn a lot about orcas by reading it, and also has really pretty illustrations throughout. So I would definitely recommend this for a middle school reader. Then since we had read A Whale of the Wild and some other books about orcas that live off the west coast of the United States, I wanted to bring in a book about salmon for my kids because the orcas in A Whale of the Wild were salmon eaters. Um, and so I grabbed this book, which we had from a previous unit last year on migration, um, about salmon. It's Salmon Stream by Carol Reed Jones. Um, and this tells about salmon migration, um, how they go up the rivers to uh, reproduce, and about how they fit into the food chain. So I thought this was a good way to bring in some more information about orcas and their life. So salmon stream. We also have Whales, Mighty Giants of the Sea. This is uh, by National Geographic, and this is a pop-up book. This is one uh, we've had since my kids were toddlers, so it's uh, our version is a little bit worn, but it's so cool. Um, I love pop-up books, and I think this one is really well done. Uh, so if you can get your hands on... Uh, this one is definitely uh, worth it. Then I got a couple books on narwhals because my younger son really likes narwhals, so I wanted to make sure we took some extra time with those. Um, this one's Narwhal Whales Up Close. Uh, and this one is photographs and um, basic facts about narwhals. So 
it was just fun to include for my kids. So, narwhal whales up close. Another one we had is for sticker book narwhals and other undersea animals. So this is a sticker book where you get to place the stickers where you want um, and be a little educational, but mostly just fun for fun. I think it's great to find engaging ways uh, to get your kids involved in the topic. And this is one of them. We have who would win whale versus giant squid. Uh, this is part of a series uh, and it matches up different animals and compares and contrasts them. So this one was fun and both giant squids and whales are really interesting. So it was fun to see them compared and we went quite a bit through this one and it's also an early reader, so this is one that you could have a young student read to themselves if you're working on that. Okay, then I have a few dolphin books to share. This one's Dolphins on the Sand by Jim Arnosky. Uh, Jim Arnosky is one of my favorite children's book writers and illustrators. You'll see lots of books by him featured on my channel, and he especially um, specializes in nature books and has lots of ocean ones. Uh, this one tells the story of some dolphins that get stranded on a beach and then about a rescue effort to get them back into the water. So beautifully illustrated and a lot of fun. Then another early reader, this is uh, an I Can Read a Book Dolphin by Robert Morris. And this one has a lot of facts about dolphins and definitely a good uh, independent reading book for an early to mid elementary school student. Um, and I thought this one was really cute and an engaging way to learn more facts about dolphins. And then I have another book by Jim Arnosky. This one's Shimmer and Splash, The Sparkling World of Sea Life. Um, and when I checked this out from the library, I just looked at the main title, Shimmer and Splash, and saw the dolphins, and I thought this was going to be only about dolphins, but it's about sea life in general. But it's so beautiful that I just have to share it with you. So it has these fold-out pages so you get the huge illustrations. And here it does have a page on dolphins. More dolphins. Just really beautiful and great information. And again, uh, with many of his books, uh, Jim Arnosky not only tells you facts about the animals, but adds a narrative to it about his own experiences with the ocean. And I think that really makes it come alive that these illustrations are just fantastic. So that's Shimmer and Splash, The Sparkling World of Sea Life by Jim Arnosky. That is all of the books that I have for our Whales and Dolphins Week. I'm gonna put all of these links in the description box below. And those are Amazon affiliate links. So if you use those links, the books cost the same, but it also helps support my channel. So thanks for watching. I'll be back shortly with more books on the ocean.